So uh, today what we're going to talk about, I'm going to get right into it because it's a pretty quick session. Uh, so today what we're going to talk about is bare metal orchestration with Dr. Infricate. Uh, who's familiar with Infricate? Awesome, we're going to have an intro on Infricate for those that didn't raise their hands, which is most. Um, has anyone heard of RackHD? Okay, so we'll do a quick introduction to RackHD, which is how we achieve bare metal orchestration, kind of IaaS-like orchestration for bare metal. Um, so I'm Aaron Spiegel, I'm with Dell EMC. I'm working with the code team. Come and see us if you want to hear more about that. So Docker Infricate. Uh, who's familiar with Docker Machine? More, cool. So one of the biggest requests that uh, the Docker team had for Docker Machine was to make it more declarative uh, and to add more features. The, the team looked at, the Docker team looked at what they had done for Machine and, and decided to start a new project in order to achieve that. And that's Infricate. Uh, so Infricate is designed to create, similar to Machine, a common uh, experience across multiple cloud platforms. So whether you're in EC2 or whether you're in Azure or whether you're on your laptop, when you want to stand up a new Docker engine host or, uh, or another uh, host application platform, you want that to be quick and easy and, and a similar experience. And now uh, to stand up a bare metal server the same way. Uh, they, knew, they needed infrastructure that was declarative and self-healing. So if that instance goes away or if that application that's running on that instance crashes, uh, then I rebuild that. And by declarative, I can define the groups that I want to create. So if I want to create a, a swarm cluster that has uh, six nodes within it, uh, instead of saying, instead of having to query to see how many nodes I currently have and then figure out the delta, I just want to declare to Infricate what I want and let Infricate accomplish that. And then also support, you know, for deployment, management, monitoring of the application stack that I'm running on that node. So Infricate delivers through its plugin infrastructure this common experience across multiple platforms. So cloud platforms, now bare metal platforms with Rack HD, um, and application platforms. So whether I'm trying to run a Zookeeper to support a big data ecosystem or an or a application ecosystem, or if I'm trying to run Swarm in order to run my containers, or whatever those applications are that I that I want to run, I can specify what, what it means to be that type of server to me, and I can supply that as a plugin. So the plugins that Infricate supports are kind of these three. The groups plugin is really the top level that you as an end user would interact with. And so you define the group and group uh, properties. It is a plugin, so you can swap out this capability in Infricate, but most users will probably just use the, the Infricate plugin that already exists for declaring your groups. Within a group, I specify a number of instances, and what makes an instance is also defined in another plugin. So there are plugins for Terraform and EC2, and we just you know, contributed one for, for Rack HD. Uh, so you determine what that instance is, and you can configure how you want that instance built. So I want these volumes created on it. I want these NICs created for it. I want this security group applied to it, et cetera. And so you provide those as properties when you want it to build your instance. And then flavors are the OS image and the application that you want deployed, or th that's the application that you want deployed on top of that instance once it exists. So once that, uh, ex that instance is stood up, I want to you know, deploy an application. You know, maybe it's uh, Docker Engine. Maybe it's Docker Engine registered to Swarm. Maybe it's um, you know, a Hadoop node. It, you can really design whatever you want. And the plugin infrastructure for designing new flavors is, is pretty easy. Each of these plugins is, in effect, uh, just a, a Go process that runs and registers itself. And uh, Infricate discovers them you know, through uh, Unix sockets underneath. So the architecture for Infricate, this is uh, stolen from Docker's blogs on it, so I should have, I should have attributed that. Um, but the way that you designed it is you create the group and you register your instance plugins and flavor plugins with that, uh, with Infricate. And then after you've done that, you will design kind of a, a group that 
deploys a certain number of instances of those various, uh, those various flavors. So you can deploy highly available Infricit, so you could have standby Infricit instances, but you'll deploy all of those plugins together kind of as one unit that can, that can cooperate on the same OS. So now we've talked about the Infricit side, what's the other side of this is RackHD. So RackHD is a, uh, hang on. RackHD is a self-service uh, self API designed for bare metal hardware. So uh, it allows you to describe the nodes, discover the nodes, group the nodes by physical characteristics, and apply orchestrated workflows to those nodes. So. Uh, in contrast to some of the other bare metal orchestration things that are out there, if you think about like Puppet Razor or Cobbler, they typically bail out at the end of the, of the reboot. Like the OS is up, I'm done. And uh, where RackHD diverges from that is we look at that boot as one step to a workflow. And you know I could be completely done with that node or I could continue and do additional tasks to that node. So I might uh, apply a workflow that boots up a specific microkernel to reconfigure the RAID controller, for example. Or I might spin up a workflow when I decommission a node to DD over the disks to do a secure erase of that node when it's time to get rid of it. So all of those initial stand-up plus day N operations tasks are all accounted for. So uh, some of the unique capabilities, you know, it can discover and catalog your nodes. Uh, it can apply those advanced workflows. It also monitors the nodes. It can drive the syslog uh, output from the nodes as it's standing them up. Uh, and it can manage firmware on those nodes to, to have a more API-driven approach to that hardware that's closer to the IaaS experience on bare metal. So if we think about where these, tool, these two tools would fit, you know, Infricit is an orchestration engine and RackHD is like an IaaS layer, layer for your bare metal. So in the demo that, we'll be, that I'll show now, I have Infricit deployed. Uh, Infricit's a microservice application with those Go plugins, like I mentioned, that are registered to one another for group instance and flavor plugins. We'll be running a vanilla uh, flavor, which is just random shell command execute. And, and then uh, the RackHD instance plugin. Uh, and then it, parallel to that, we run the RackHD infrastructure, uh, which has uh, IPMI drivers for interacting with hardware, other OBM support. It has a DHCP proxy in order to intercept the boot commands. Uh, and it, it has the syslog service, as I mentioned, with this workflow engine on top of it. So Infricit will be executing workflows down onto RackHD. So the steps that I'll demo is I'll, I'll discover the hardware, I'll take a, a blank uh, RackHD instance and I'll discover that hardware through D, uh, DHCP. Um, I'll show you how we define the SKU, how I decide what type of server that is and whether or not I want to provision it for that use case. And then we'll use Infricit to, to provision that environment. So in this example, because it's all on VirtualBox, uh, I won't be Running, running actual applications, just a shell command that I'll be executing, but that shell command actually gets created by the Infricit plugin itself. So that whether the Zookeeper, whether it's you know performing an entire installation and then startup script or whatever it is, you know at the end of it, it's just one shell command that Infricit needs in order to stand up that service. So let's flip to the demo. Doing good on time. I apologize for not doing a live demo. I typically do, but uh, the OS install is 15 minutes, so I would have only had like three minutes to talk. So uh, I'm gonna pixie boot the node. I'm not gonna show all of that, uh, but I'm gonna look at the RackHD API output, and then I've discovered that node. Uh, is that JSON show up okay for people? Excellent. So I can discover that node, and I've discovered all of this data about it. The MAC address, you know, this is VirtualBox, so it has the enclosure, which is the VirtualBox service. Um, and I've already assigned it to a SKU. And, uh, and you can see these paths that I can assign workflows to this through these URL links uh, that are in this JSON object. You don't have to read all of that intimately, but if, if people are interested and want to learn more about it, they can always come by the booth. 
So I'm just going to take out the, the node ID and I'm going to look at the catalogs that are available. Catalogs are all of the data that we discover about a, a specific node. So, um, so we use a number of different plugins. So we can look at DMI data, which gets a lot of the hardware information. We actually, we have a microkernel that boots up. Uh, oh, let me take a step back for that. So here's the, oops, I went too far. So we have DMI, which picks up the hardware information. We actually also have a microkernel that boots up and runs OHI and pulls all of the information out of that OS using OHI from, from Chef, which gives us a lot of great info. So as my next step, I'm going to actually apply an Infricit test. So this JSON file is how you would specify a group inside Infricit. And you can see at the top, I have an instance that I've defined. And it's a RackHD instance, and I'm going to install uh, CentOS on it at version 7.0. And this could actually, this code block could actually become much larger if you wanted to configure specific disks or if you wanted to configure the NICs in a certain way. There's a lot of specification where you can decide exactly how you want that OS laid down or how you want uh, resources attached to that. And then I want you to draw it from the VirtualBox SKU, which it defined from that DMI data. And then I want to apply this flavor on it. And the flavor that I want to apply, it's just that shell script to, uh, to say hello to, to all of us. So I execute that group commit. And then I list. I can see that I've created that group. And that could be one server or that could be you know, 20 servers. It doesn't matter. And then I can list the instances from Infocit that I've just created. And so that'll show me. Oh, I should have left more time for transitions in here. That'll show me all of the instances that I've defined. And if anyone's done any work with bare metal orchestration, you can see that the IP address is up there. It actually pulled that IP address over OHI, which is, is really hard to do when you're doing like uh, Razor and things like that, is now that I've stood up the OS, go tell me things about the logical operating system inside that OS. That's typically pretty hard. So I'd like to point that out because it's neat that that RackHD can do that. So I've deployed that, workflo that workflow. So in parallel with this, the machine's you know, booted. I, you know, uh, IPMI tells it to reboot. It picks up Pixie. This is going to be the fastest OS install you've ever seen because I sped it up a lot. Um, and it's going to start through the CentOS installer. I'm going to speed it up even more. Um, it's going to take it through the CentOS installer, and then it's going to inject the infrakit commands at the end of the install to stand up the service that I want to run on it. And now that that is stood up, and there, you know, there's the service that I stood up on it was Hello World. But now that that service is stood up, you can also configure your flavors to monitor the health of that application that's running. So if that application isn't running anymore, infrakit can tear down that uh, that physical machine, which is an, which would initiate a decommission workflow, and then initiate an, a build of another machine to replace it. So it's self-filling infrastructure. It's it's declarative, and it's all executing against bare metal, which you could use in combination with a virtual environment or in place of a virtual environment. And uh, I have minutes for questions because I talked really fast. Yeah, the question is how mature is RackHD? So RackHD as a project was released about a year and a half ago. Um, it were on version 2.x. So the workflows uh, work very well. Uh, I want to caveat that today we rely a lot on IPMI and Pixie, which if anyone's done a lot of work with those, they can be challenging. Uh, we do have some teams that are working on some deeper integration with specific hardware. Uh, some of the new RMMs have, uh, have better API support. So when we can use the RMM API support and get away from Pixie and IPMI, then we can make it perform a whole lot better. Oh, cool. There's no more questions. Thanks a lot for attending the talk. And feel free to come by and talk to me more if you want to talk about bare metal or Infricit or Go or lots of things.